I've come across this morning with the hope of test flying the brakes that we've been working on, typical Jodel fashion. Um, for some strange reason, the last time I flew, the left brake started to bind. Uh, cleared that one up. I uh, wasn't able to test fly, so I was hoping to test fly today, but look at the weather. Um, that's not going to happen. So instead, I thought I'd use the time to install the mini EFIS that I purchased from Paul at partsforaircraft.com uh, this particular unit is from MGL it's called the Extreme EFIS um, I saw the unit advertised at Sywell at Cy and uh, was very very impressed you can see that the actual unit itself uh, will fit into a standard instrument hole. Um, Paul was good enough to wire up for me the loom that attaches to the uh, back of the unit and also to the sender which is the SP7. Um, tubes here and adapters in order to tie into the pitot and static. Um, outside air temperature probe and uh, GPS sender receiver and uh, a long loom as I say for the SP7 so it will be over into the hangar in a minute and give that the best shot unfortunately we're not going to be able to film very much of that one because it's going to be very very dark As I said in the club room earlier, I am battling against the dark over here in the hangar. I don't know whether you can hear the rain on the tin roof as well, but uh, yeah, it's pretty miserable outside. But some of you will have recognised the panel from previous videos of mine, but my problem is that the artificial horizon has not ever really worked particularly well. Um, been very sluggish to say the least so when I saw at the LAA rally the stand for partsforaircraft.com and I spoke to Paul um, it did seem that that extreme mini ethos would do a tremendous job in replacing that artificial horizon and also the turn and slip underneath which is US as well so the object of the exercise now is to remove that top panel, get in behind there and see what I need to do in order to tie that all together. But I'll try and keep you posted but there's not a lot of room and with the exception of the um, inspection light there's not a lot of illumination either. But here goes, we'll give it a try. Quite a little bird's nest of different bits and pieces, but just taking my time. I've mounted the SP7 on this bracket that sits just behind the two front seats. Uh, originally made the bracket to hold the intercom unit, it's got velcro underneath there, but uh, with the SP7 it has to be mounted as centrally as possible to the aircraft's center of rotation in both pitch and roll um, so I think that is in a pretty good place, it seems to be working okay but that's where we put the SP7 and as you can see the wiring loom comes off of the back here and runs underneath the seat and up to the front panel well there we are the uh, plug into the back of the EFIS. I've tapped into the PITO and the static. Um, I've made the connections to the positives. I've taken all the uh, negatives to earth, wired it in through a slow burn fuse and a switch and down there I think you can see 
it goes into the bus bar and the main fuses. You can just about see, I don't know whether you can, but uh, just behind the senders there, you've got the blue tubes which connect the pito and the static. There's all the connections. And what I've done with the GPS is it comes out of the back of the unit and through up and forward of the dash. So it just means that I put it all back up together and we'll see what it looks like. So there we are, that's the instrument panel back in place and the compass combing over the top. It just leaves me to test it. Fingers crossed. Master has gone on. Switch. And there we are. It's powering up. And it just means I've now got to calibrate it and sort it out for this aircraft. But I'll do that in a different video. I think it looks quite nice. Shame it's dark in the hangar here. But there we are, in place.